Now, on the 8th of April 2010, Pauline and Jim Green said goodbye to their son Matthew as he headed off to London to spend the weekend with friends. They had no idea it was to be the last time they would see or hear from him for six years. But two weeks ago, the Green family finally got the news that they'd been dreaming of when they were told that Matthew had been found alive and well in Spain. But sadly, their elation was short-lived and they have yet to be reunited with their son. Uh, they join us now along with former police officer Mark Williams Thomas to tell us more. We should say right at the very beginning of this conversation, as we came on air, there has been a major development in this story. Yeah. So we'll come to that in, in just a moment because I just to anyone who doesn't know this story, just to sort of set this up. Um, this all happened when he was 17, really, didn't it? What sort of a boy had he been before the age of 17? Um, outgoing. Football, social life, lots of girlfriends, or too many girlfriends, probably. Typical boy. It's a typical, <laughs> yeah, yeah, typical teenager. <clears throat> and just, yeah, generally. He was then accused of a crime mm -hmm. that he was absolutely acquitted yes. from. And he, yes. he, he had a cast iron alibi when, when it was yeah. a girl who said that she'd been raped. Yes. He was in, it, there was CCTV, mm -hmm. he was entirely in a different place. Yes. So, yeah. Totally innocent. 40 miles away. Yeah, yeah, totally innocent, totally. and she'd made up the whole story. She admitted yeah. that she'd yeah, she made it up eventually. <laughs> the police came and apologised, but it left long-term damage with him, yes. didn't it? After yeah. this, the boy you knew had gone. Yes. So what did he become after that? Um, he stopped football, didn't he? Yes. And stopped socialising. Just virtually stayed in all the and time. And just withdrew. Yeah, yeah. And withdrew yeah. within himself. Yeah. Um, stayed in his room, um, got his food, went to his room. And we talked, to, tried to talk to him about, um, you know, different bits of, uh, about what had happened, but he just didn't want to know. The damage it spiraled damage. out of control. It got worse and worse and worse. He then started to, to drink heavily. He was taking cannabis, mm -hmm. and that led to psychotic problems. Yes. yes. Um, and well, eventually, he got he was sectioned. Yes, that's right. That's right. In 2008, he was sectioned um, for psychotic paranoia, which obviously, if you ingest the likes of cannabis oh. over a long period of time, that's sort of... But he had his treatment. He was yeah. uh, then came out of it, there with no medicine needed yes, at all and right. began to live his life. And, mm -hmm. and then we come to this day, so it's April the 8th, 2010, mm -hmm. and this was the last time that you this, saw him. Yes. Yeah. So he was going off, as you thought, to London mm -hmm. to go and For see some friends. Yes. And he never met those friends, did he? Yeah. He never, never, never went got... to that destination. He yeah. took his passport with him, yes. he didn't take his phone, he yeah. took some money and he took mm -hmm. his driving licence. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. all you know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Until and, uh, very recently. Yes. <laughs> so what were, what, what were those years like? Oh, I mean, you oh. searched the streets we've, for him. We've done everything that we can possibly think of doing. Mm. We've walked the streets of London, and he said he was going to Mile End for that weekend, and we've walked Mile End, and it is just never-ending. Yeah. We've just and walked, walked and And also walked. with different organisation, uh, missing people, mm. Um, mm. we've done um, 2011... Uh, missing. Yeah. We're, we've been on mm. with Louise Minchin, Gloria Hannaford. Oh, you worked with Mark. Yes. That's why Mark. Yeah, Mark. Yes. Uh, yeah. Mark. Mark is boys. Well, we've done he's so much. Work. So then, for, uh, uh, you refuse to give up. Yeah, I won't. Uh, and it must have must tear you apart mm. over that length yes. of time, not knowing what's mm. going on. And then, 15 days ago, six years later, mm -hmm. on the 3rd of May, you have that heart-stopping moment, and Kent police visit you and say they know where he is. Yeah, he's been found, yes. How did you feel? <sighs> Shocked, um, elated, obviously. Yeah. And then it was a bombardment of questions. That's when all the questions started again. Yeah. But they wouldn't give us any they answers. They won't tell And this is because of this data protect protection, protection situation. Yeah. So he is in Spain, yes. but he's an adult. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he's entitled well, to, that, to privacy. To his yes. privacy. Yes. Yes. But the issue here is, is that he, the, the, he's in, he, well, we know this now, but we, it was because he hadn't made a decision. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. To be able and to let you in. exactly down yes. to him mm. to make that decision. <clears throat> but if he had mental health issues, how could he make those? Or would, were, were they the right decisions? And I, I'll, I've looked into to turn around and say that we are his parents, we are his guardians, and he's next of kin, and if he's not capable and well enough to make those decisions, 
they should, should have been, should, they should have been contacted. Yes. It's even more torture. Six years not knowing where he is. Then you find out where he is and you can't talk to him. You can't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Under the date of protection.